Bernie Sanders had just gotten word in the news that, hey, Bernie Sanders is someone that you can vote for, someone that might win. He's a serious person that maybe you should take seriously. And again, it's what we've been saying for the last year, the last four years. We go. Um, but there was a dark side to that. And we were talking about that yesterday. And lo and behold, it's like almost as if someone watched our show and decided to write an article on that. So let's talk about it. Beware, because disparaging and minimizing Bernie in 2019 didn't work. The next step in 2020 will be to trash him with a vast array of full-bore attacks. The a central premise of conventional media wisdom has collapsed. Well, I guess another, I suppose. On Thursday, both the New York Times and Politico, both, you know, very, very strong, always accurate papers, published major articles reporting that Bernie Sanders could really win the Democratic presidential nomination. Such acknowledgments will add to the momentum of the Bernie 2020 campaign as the new year begins, but they foreshadow a massive escalation of anti-Sanders misinformation and um so anyway throughout 2019 corporate media routinely asserted that the sanders campaign had little chance of winning the nomination we've covered this for the last year their smears their belittlement and we said hey eventually they're not going to be able to ignore him uh so anyway we continue as is so often the case, journalists were echoing each other more than paying attention to grassroots realities. I think that's part of the reason why our track record is so much better than theirs on this type of subject. So I'm glad, again, that they're finally echoing each other in a reasonable fashion. But now, polling numbers and other indicators on the ground are finally sparking very different headlines from the establishment media. From The Times, quote, Why Bernie Sanders is tough to beat. From Politico, Democratic Insiders. Bernie could win the nomination. And we kind of read that as a Washington Post of a uh, democracy dies in darkness. Is that a comment? Is it a threat? Probably a little both. Mm -hmm. This is very similar. Uh, those stories and others likely to follow in copycat news outlets because, like they said, and this is what we've seen, if New York Times and Politico says Bernie Sanders has a chance of winning, everyone's going to copy suit because no one has an original bone in their body, will heighten the energies of Sanders supporters and draw many wavering voters. But the shift in media narratives about the Bernie Sanders uh, chances uh, will surely boost the decibels of alarm bells in elite circles while dousing the fires of progressive populism as a top priority. So like we said, they can't ignore him anymore or it's very hard for them to keep ignoring him so now they're going to go on the attack which is exactly what we expected so along the way corporate media will shut that off <laughs> along the way corporate media will occasionally give a voice to some sanders defenders and supporters and that's just you know so they can say that they're playing it fair a few establishment democrats uh, will decide to make him uh early this year uh but the overwhelming bulk of sanders media coverage synced up with the likes of such prominent uh, corporate flunkies as Rahm Emanuel. Um, we have a lot to say about Rahm Emanuel here in Chicago. Oh, we've said lots and lots about mm -hmm. our good friend Rahm Emanuel. Yeah, may he fall down a short shaft with his short body, hypothetically. <laughs> Uh, and Neera Tandon, also a very, very terrible person, as well as Wall Street Democrats accustomed to ruling the roost in the party will range from condescending to savage. While reasons for pessimism are abundant, I want to add this out there. I, I add this every now and then in many different contexts, but it's not useful to be pessimistic. I know there's a bunch of people I see in comments who are like, well, Bernie can't win. That's a useless way to look at the world. It really doesn't help anyone, and it really is, if anything, an establishment point of view. If you say Bernie Sanders can't win, Tulsi Gabbard can't win, anyone else can't win, you're really saying, I agree with the New York Times, the New York Times has good points, and I'm going to support them whether I mean to or not. His intention, sadly, isn't what matters. It's um, what people think is going to happen that drives reality. So uh, if you like Sanders, act as if he's going to win, and you increase the chance of him winning. If you like Sanders and you act like he's not going to win, you're actually hurting him. So even if you think the chance is low, you're not helping. Um, that's just my point of view, though. So, um, I, mean, I can expound on that a little bit. Go for it. Yeah, I think the left has this problem of sort of cannibalizing itself, right? And so th there's this massive skepticism of like, oh, well, there's this candidate, and oh, Bernie, I like Bernie, he says the right things. Well, but he doesn't really say the things that I really want him to say about 
foreign policy X or country Y or such and such specific policy. And oh, if he would be stronger on that point if he wasn't co-opted. He must be co-opted by the establishment. He must be a sheepdog. He must be sheepdogging people into the Democratic Party. Oh, he he's, w- uh, he's a wolf in sheep's yeah. clothing. That's oh, the problem. Oh, who vo- voted for Hillary and campaigned for Hillary because he was legally required to do so as a member of the Democratic Party. I'm going to hold that against him and not vote for right, him. Right, but the thing that bums me out about it is like the, okay, I agree we cannot blindly have political heroes. We can't say politician X is so good, we are gonna follow everything we, that they right. do. Yes, go ahead and have informed opinions about topics, about policy, about things that you care about and want your government to do. But when somebody comes along and ticks a lot of boxes for you, but maybe doesn't say what you want in exactly the way you want it in some particular era area, that's not license to say, well, they must have been co-opted and now we'll never get, it's a, it's a defeatist attitude. I just don't like defeatism. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a pessimist. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm the worry wart. I'm the one that's but saying, you're a productive oh, pessimist. but I am not about to be a defeatist. I'm, yeah. I'm not about to throw my hands up and say, well, anyone that looks good is only looking good because the, they're backed by establishment. The whatever. That's just, that's just the left cannibalizing and itself. That's, and even worse than saying that, which I think is on itself are really bad, to say that, well, the establishment's going to beat him. So why are you even involved in politics? If your point of view is we can't ever win, why, just, why, why every, watch Everything this? is always bad. Yeah. Let me tell you how everything, anything you think is good is definitely bad. Let me tell and, you about how bad it is. Had, if... Again, this is what we talk about. We win by winning. You don't win by punching water. What we mean by that, again, is you win by making a better structure of power that can topple opposition. You don't win a battle with another army by having one soldier that kind of is involved versus 10,000 people. You win by having 11,000 people similarly equipped. That simple. And so we win by winning, and you don't win by punching water. You can't destroy the establishment by just saying they're bad. You have to replace them. Right. And if the in reality, there's only one person who has all the ideas and all the viewpoints that you have, and that's you. And if you think that they're so great, run for office and get a majority of people to agree with you. We need more people like you. So just to finish up the article, uh, Bernie is fond of quoting a statement from Nelson Mandela. It is always impossible until it is done. And this is one of those circumstances where Sanders currently has the largest donor base, the largest amount of volunteers. He's leading in the early states. He has all the momentum he needs going for him. Warren's falling down, which is his natural competition. Uh, Biden is, of course, um, not going to do well at all in the first number of states, which will shift. Sanders is... In the last 40 years, there really isn't someone that has been positioned to not only win the presidency, but actually win the policy. His theory of change is where it needs to be, and he is about to get attacked greatly by many people who don't want to lose their power. And the reason they're attacking him, again, you don't attack someone that's not a threat. You don't attack someone that's, again, this is Tulsi Gabbard gets attacked a lot. She's a threat to a lot of people's power. Sanders gets attacked a lot. He's a threat. You don't attack people that you don't think can win. Sanders almost won. He got 10%, the 10% margin last time. He got 45% of the vote in the last primary. And that's when no one knew him. That's when he didn't have anything. It's when Hillary Clinton had everything. Mm-hmm. So let's win by winning. You know, the, I think about these stories sort of back to back, right? Yesterday we covered... Um, Basically, establishment mainstream press going. Oh, maybe Bernie looks. Uh, maybe Bernie looks okay. Uh, he looks electable. Like he's actually doing pretty well. Who would have thought? And th- so there are like a zillion ways of interpreting. Like, okay, you didn't just realize that this is a viable candidate. You've been actively ignoring him or smearing him for so long. There's no way that this is an actual epiphany that you're just having. So what's what's the nefarious motive? And this is you know this is sort of the attack piece you know from the left saying hey. Get ready, batten down the hatches, you know, storms are coming, right? They're coming after Bernie. And now's the time, right? If they're going to come after Bernie, they're going to want to do it right before, you know, Iowa and the other early states, New Hampshire, etc. Um, we're expecting, you know, the Senate trial on, on impeachment to start at probably the most inopportune time for Bernie Sanders. Like, it January into February, maybe, maybe further into February, hard to say, is going to be a really, really rough time for the campaign. And uh, I think 
a lot of our audience is sort of Bernie Sanders audience, Tulsi Gabbard audience, uh, Andrew Yang, kind of in that order, I think, mm -hmm. is, is the folks that kind of are Hardlands media fans. And I just, I just got to say, if you're a Tulsi fan, be ready to support Bernie. And if you're a Bernie fan, you need to support Tulsi too. Like the, we, the more infighting there is between those two camps, the less productive any of yeah. us are being. At some point, they're very—I mean—they're very close friends. Bernie knows Tulsi very well. She supported him very, very uh, courageously in the last election. They know each other really well. We think that they're going to work together no matter what. So why fight? Why? They're going to, one of them is going to join the other. So why split the base? It doesn't make any sense. It's not useful. Let's fight the real enemy. Let's well, get to the point. Considering that Tulsi Gabbard is, still doesn't command a, as much um, sort of rhetorical respect uh, on the, a major stage as Bernie Sanders does. Bernie Sanders just has gotten over that threshold and has been able to get past all of the BS propaganda about him Tulsi as an individual. still needs time to grow. It's just right. like Bernie so, in the first but round. But she's being, she's in this like being ignored is still mm -hmm. sort of working against her campaign yeah. phase. And if Bernie is going to have to go into these hearings in the Senate that could last six weeks, who knows, uh, well, who's the voice out there for those two camps, which represent a good majority of the actual Democratic base between them? I mean, close to a majority, 45 percent, about 50 percent. Uh, it depends on which poll you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And again, um, we're going to see the primary start very soon. It's still a quiet time. Many of you that are watching now are way ahead of most Americans and when this is happening. Mm -hmm. And very, very soon, a lot more people are going to wake up. And it's up to us, no matter who we're going for, if we want an outsider, an outside idea to win, whether that be through Bernie's domestic policy, Tulsi's foreign policy, or a lot of Yang's new ideas, we have to work together to make that happen. Because if we split apart on that, I don't see the point.